I've shared before about uh, the couple in the church in their late 50s that they're the ones that helped me become aware of the, the orphans and widows right here in our area. And they said, man, we've just been taking care of foster kids for years. And now in their late 50s, they've got 11 of them in their house. Um, no excuses about age or, well, but those are unique people. No, not really. He's a mechanic. She's a hairdresser. Normal jobs, normal people that just said, you know what? God says true religion is to care for the widows of the orphans. So if they're here, I've got to take care of them. I'll, I'll find some way. And so they spent their lives taking care of them. And now their kids are doing the same thing. Just, just, just normal people. I was talking to a couple this week that said, you know what, we've got our two kids, and then we have this other family, they've got their two kids, and we thought, why do we have two houses? If the, if the eight of us could just live together, we could save a mortgage payment and give all that money away. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's good, if that's what God's led you to do. Another couple that said, you know, found out there was a family of four in the church that was about to go homeless, and they said, you know what, come live with us, just live with us, we'll, we'll figure it out, just live with us. You know, our kids are grown up, they're out of the house, your whole family can live here, and they've been there for months. Another, another couple that said, you know, you, you talked about simplifying and downsizing. We thought, man, we can't downsize anymore. So we, we decided to move into an RV and, uh, and let other people live in our house. And so, you know, our way of simplifying was living in an RV. Another guy who I talked to last week that said, you know, I, I just want to care for whoever I can. You know, the people that are most rejected. And he thought, what, who are the most rejected people? Because I want to go and rescue and care for them and love them like Christ. And so he says, I'm gonna, I, I'm, we're going through the foster care. And he goes, my wife and I were talking. He goes, let's go to them and say, we want the person that no one will take. Maybe it's a kid that's, that's on all sorts of machines and is 16 years old and still in diapers. And we've got to care and clean and feed and everything. He goes, man, we just want to surrender ourselves to someone like that. And I'm like, man, that, these are heavy things. You know, we had, a, we had you know, every, every week the foster classes here, I know that 75 to 100 of you have been coming every week. You know, we had a great worship service this morning, but I'll tell you, it was a better worship service yesterday with 75 people that are sitting in a class for six or seven hours learning about foster parenting and trying to figure out how to care for some of these people and care for their needs. That's worship. That's an amazing worship service. That's an amazing, that's, that's a worship service that Ventura County has never heard of until Cornerstone Church a few weeks ago. And they said, well, you don't understand. We've never had more than a dozen people in these classes, you know, and now we start doing them here and you've got 75 to 100 people showing up. That's unheard of. That's worship. You know, that's, that's a crazy stuff I'm talking about here. I, 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 there, there are people in our own church that are doing some mission stuff overseas in, in places where Christianity is persecuted, and the persecution has followed them to the U.S., and there have been death threats on their lives right here in the U.S. You know, there, there's people in our church who, who go to the prisons every week, people in our church that, that, that uh, go into the skid row and, and are there, you know, uh, all day long, every day, just, just trying to help the people down there. There's other people in our church, you know, another guy who just said, you know, and this was before the housing market crashed, you know, at the peak, he just gave us the keys to his house and said, you know what, sell it, give the money to the poor, do something, you know, a couple hundred thousand in equity, I'm going to go live with my parents because I want the reward in heaven. Like, right on, right on. Just, there's, 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 I get, I get email, emails every week, every week from people all around the nation that are getting it. Doctors that are quitting their practices here, that were doing it for money and saying, you know what, I'm going to go overseas. They need it more over there. And just, we're selling everything. We're going for it. Dennis, attorneys. I got one from an attorney a couple of weeks ago that says, you know, making all this money and everything else and, you know, listening to some of the messages there, I decided, you know, I, I, I'm moving, I moved to the Philippines six months ago to work with international justice ministries and to try, them, try to help them out. And I'm just going to do that the rest of my life now, is use my skills in law to now break the yoke of slavery all around the world. Others who are saying, no, I'm staying right here. I'm making a ton of money. I'm going to make a fortune, but I'm not going to spend it on myself. I'm not going to spend 90% on myself. I'm going to live off the bare minimum, and I'm going to give the 90% away. Businessmen, cops, everyone, people doing this. I had, a, I had another guy just a couple weeks ago, again, talk to him on the phone, who, who a few months ago very successful businessman, just going, what in the world am I doing making a home for myself here? Sold his home, sold everything, packed up he and the three or four kids, and they moved into an RV and said, let's just travel around America and help people everywhere we drive, wherever we go. Just, I don't even know what we're doing. We're just driving around helping and doing whatever we can to care for the needs of other people. It's, it's, uh, it's been pretty powerful. 
There have been a lot of people doing a lot of different things and people going to the ends of the earth and people right here in Simi Valley that are going for it. But they decided what I hear from them all is they start with biblical conviction. These are not people who heard a word from God like an audible voice, because sometimes we go, well, God hasn't called me. God didn't tell me to do this. God didn't tell me to do that. God told those people to do that, but he hasn't told me this. And I'm going, have you, have you read this lately? Oh you, oh, you mean you need an audible voice? Not like the rest of us that can just read the word of God and go, ah, I should do something about that. You want to hear a voice directly from God. You don't need to hear a voice from God to go to the movies. You don't need to hear, oh, but God didn't tell me to watch TV. That, you don't care. But to serve him and actually do something for the kingdom, then you need to hear an audible voice, right? And the written word isn't enough. You guys, these are people that are just saying, man, I'm just reading this. I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking about the poor, and I'm going, okay, I got to do something. Here's what I can do. And they're praying, Holy Spirit, help me. And it is spirit-led. It is, it is. But, but you start with that, okay, here's what the word of God says. God, show me what I need to do. And I'm just going to pursue things. I'm just going to go after it and see what happens. And then as you do that, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you. You'll be directed, but it's, it's out of a desire, a heart saying, I want to rescue. I mean, doesn't your heart, doesn't something, when you hear those stories about people being rescued, doesn't, doesn't everything in you just leap going, I want to do that. I want to do that with my life. That seems so much more fulfilling. That seems so much cooler, just to devote my life. It's not, I'm not asking you to do something you're going to hate. Yeah, there'll be times when it's rough or whatever else. I'm asking you to do something that you'll love and at the end of your life actually have a fulfillment that you did something with your life and then at the end of your life also realize, wow, I am stoked for all of eternity because of what I did when I was on that little planet. That's what I'm asking you to do is to devote your life to this.